Welcome back to Ladies of Another View, and I want to welcome back our guest, Scott Shepard. He's the director of the National Center's Free Enterprise Project, and that is a that is a program under the National Center for Public Policy Research. We often have many of their um, that people with different, like Project 21, they are doing so much to bring the traditional values, supporting that, protecting it. So welcome back to the show, Scott. Thank um, you so much. I saw an article you recently wrote on their blog, um, really intriguing. Uh, let's see, what was it? Bob Iger's Dark Disney Magic, a wrecking ball for wokeness. And he is the CEO of Disney. And I know he has a little bit of history with them that's kind of mysterious and weird where he's stepping down, but then the guy that replaces him is like really his stock, sock puppet and he comes back. What is going on with Disney, first of all? They're, they're not doing well, are they? No, they're not. And interestingly, with that shimmy about stepping down or not stepping down, it turns out that Bob Iger never gave up the CEO suite, the physical corner office in the Disney building. He kept that, made made Bob uh, Chapek uh, sit in a, close, uh, a, a broom closet or something <laughs> down the road and never really gave up... Uh, uh, control of the company at all and you can see that in absolutely everything that uh, that um, Disney has done for years Bob Iger is a true believing leftist and he wants he hired people who are true believing leftists and he uh, wanted the company to be run in that direction he wanted to get away from its base of uh, entertaining children and get into politics I mean Disney and politics and there we are and so now Bob Iger's uh, uh, legacy for Disney may very well be having driven it into the ground because I think there were six tentpole uh, productions that the Disney produced this year. All of them at very most may be broke even before you count the, the publicity costs, but they all lost money. Indiana Jones 5 not only lost half a billion dollars, but it killed off the Indiana Jones series because it was so offensive to, and, and get this, it was so offensive to the memory of Indiana Jones. I mean, how do you make a movie that kicks, that, that's a, a sequel because you want to build on all of those good feelings, and then you kick the uh, the center uh, uh, party of that uh, that uh, series uh, right down the steps? And Scott, you're ruining it for me. I haven't seen it well, yet. <laughs> I don't know. I've read a lot of reviews. I went to Rotten Tomatoes, and a lot of people are so disappointed. There were some people that said they liked it, and and Scott had written that basically you take the Indiana Jones character, you place him with a sad wreck of a man while attempting to swap him out for an almost indescribably unlikable replacement who also, of course, there's a strong, powerful woman who rightly makes men look worthless. Like, that's the, the, the final, is it one Indiana Jones, five, and then... Yeah, I, I don't see how they can possibly come back from it. And you'll notice there haven't been any Star Wars movies for years because Kathleen Kennedy has in, been in charge of all of the Lucas films, so Indiana and uh, Star Wars has put so much left-wing pride into these movies that nobody wants to watch them anymore. They've killed off, they've it's killed off Star Wars. How is that even possible? That horrible <laughs> movie in 1999 didn't kill off Star Wars. How could they do that? And yet here we are. It seems and, like all of these woke companies are just shooting themselves in the foot on purpose. I mean, it's hard to kind of see another way based on all the money that's being lost. Yeah, you know, that's absolutely right. I mean, the three biggest examples are Disney and Target and, of course, Bud Light. Budweiser. And the, the fundamental, I mean, yes, they all went woke. And yes, that was uh, insulting to their general customer base. But the real problem is that oops we froze up what's the real problem no <laughs> <laughs> the real problem it's a cliffhanger here okay hopefully we're going to get this readjusted here because we need to know what the real problem is i think part of the real problem is esg and these big investment companies right that we're finding out that is behind these what's um, esg esg environment equity equity no. esg uh S sex and gender environmental or something? social Credit score yeah. and oh, these okay. other ones yeah, yeah, alike yeah. with the They're equity and all of this. That you have to go woke, 
or, or you, you go don't broke. get your That's what you do yeah. not get yeah. your executive pay salary. They are all in controlling these different companies through you know places like BlackRock and etc. Yep. And and they're controlling. They have controlling interest or controlling portions. They're saying if you don't do things our way, then you're not going to get paid. You're not going to maintain this place on the board, or you're not going to keep this nice. It has to do position. with loans. It has to do with banking, even yep. even the ability to do business. Mm -hmm. But now it's coming back. Uh, to stab them in the back because we're, we're saying like you go woke, go broke, whereas they're being told that on both sides of it. So it's yeah. really, well, you know, I just want to see normalcy. Like, and what's normal? I just want to see like good morals and values, values and and yes. the nuclear family. And I just want okay. to see happy endings and not the evil person always be some old white lady. You know, <laughs> that, that's just it. Is it is that good and bad is getting all mixed up? So we got it. We got Scott back here. Scott, you let it was like a cliffhanger. So what sorry about that. Now I wound up and wound up and didn't say what was the real problem. Yeah. If I yeah. if you let me spin on for like 30 more seconds, it could have been a real cliffhanger. <laughs> that would be awesome. We got you back though. What's the real problem? The real problem is that they keep hiring people who hate their customers. You know, if uh, yep. if Bud Light had hired instead of a Harvard trained uh, elitist, somebody who liked fratty guys and you know the, the people who actually drink Bud Light, they, they wouldn't have uh, created these problems for themselves. If if uh, Disney, instead of hiring left wing uh, ideologues, would hire people who actually also like the Star Wars that everybody else likes and the Indiana Jones that everybody else likes and write those stories, then they wouldn't have any trouble and they wouldn't be losing 300,000 subscribers in the U.S. from Disney Plus in the past. I don't remember the time, but they've lost 300,000. So Disney Plus is already sinking um, before it ever hit its stride. Well, I feel like you can support people without starting wars. They and be inclusive without that. Everything instead of just being about entertainment, because they purposely said, "No, you've got to put some of these characters. You have to have some kind of gender confused person as a main character in all their movies." Like, why don't you just make a good story instead of saying yeah. this is a requirement before you even start to write the script? Yeah. Well, Scott, we've run out of time, but um, we're going to keep in touch with you. We, we um, are hoping the Starbucks lawsuit goes through. So, thanks for joining us today. Please do, ladies. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much. See you Thanks. soon.